Now that all the finishing has been done, it's time to put the chamfers on the part. Here, 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 and down here on this step. We're going to use a countersink to perform these chamfers. Let's have a look at the countersink in detail. If we zoom in here, we see that the countersink has a sharp point. And it has an angle, an included angle of 90, which makes each side 45. And the diameter is 3 8 It will have four, five, or six flutes. And it has 3 16 worth of usable flute. We need to remember that as we move forward in this lesson. Let's bring the countersink down into the list and select contour. Let's set the depth according to the drawing. The drawing says that we have a 50,000 chamfer here. But do we want to put in minus 50 thousandths here? And the answer is no. If we did that, we would be cutting with the tip of the tool and we would leave an awful gouge on the parts. So instead of minus 50, let's go to minus 70 thousandths. And here, under stock plus or minus, since the chamfer is 50 thousandths on the top of this boss, we're going to set the stock to minus 0.05. It's going to take this line and cut minus 0.05. Let's check our other parameters here. Lead in, lead out, cutter comp on, overlap, stock is minus 50, toolpath is minus 70. If we click on this circle and on the machining marker, click the outside circle and do it, we now have a toolpath that goes all the way around. Let's look at this in OPSIM. Let's slow down the throttle a little bit and let's single block through this so we can see what's happening. We want to see where the cutter contact is. Here's my lead in, and there is my cutter contact. You can see that it's not using the tip, and it's not using the main body. Either one of those would put a horrible gouge on the part. And now we will single block through this, and we are done. This chamfer is complete. To complete the other chamfer, we simply click here, the outside circle, and do it and we have another toolpath identical to that one and if we click play we'll see that those chamfers are done. While we're here let's do the top 20,000 chamfers on the hole. All we need to do is set this to stock to minus 0.02 and let's go back to geometry and click the circle but remember to click the inside of the circle do it. Click the inside of the circle and do it. Let's have a look at this from overhead view to make sure that the cutter has room as long as it doesn't pass center if we know that it has room to get in and cut those 20,000 chamfers. Let's have a look in sim and we'll use next feature which is the equivalent to single block on your machine. And there we go. We have the chamfers cut on the inside of the hole. Now we have another chamfer on the inside of this hole. But let's see what happens if we simply click here, click the inside circle, and do it. We have a toolpath, but let's go look at the toolpath and see if there are any problems. What we're looking for is the side clearance of the cutter once we lead into the part. And as you can see, the depth is incorrect, so let's change the depth. For each chamfer that you have, you must specify the depth of the top, which is minus 0.25, and the bottom, minus 0.25, minus 0.07, equals. So that's minus 0.320, and redo. Let's go look at that toolpath again, and we're going to employ a new strategy something that you haven't seen yet. In version 2022, we have a new start stop function. The start at operation now instantaneously generates the origin stock. 
In previous versions of GibbsCam, GibbsCam had to run through the toolpath at least one time to generate this initial stop. And we select the value of the operation here with this pull down. And we do want to start at op 11, which is our first chamfer op. Now when we rewind, it rewinds us to the beginning of op 11. We have the throttle set slow so we can see everything. And we have the holes done. And now what do we have here? We have an issue where the side of the cutter actually hit the part. What can we do about that? What we're going to do about that is we're going to drive the cutter farther down into the workpiece because the farther that we drive the cutter down into the workpiece, the more of the side of the cutter it uses, which moves the cutter in this direction away from the wall of the boss. So instead of minus uh, 250 minus 70, let's make it minus 0.250 minus 0.15 because remember we have 187 thousandths of usable flute there. By using 185 we ensure that we don't cut with the exact side of the tool. Let's change our stop to op 15 because that's where we want to start in the program. When we click rewind it's all ready to go and now we're going to single block and look at this very carefully. You can see now we're using a deeper part of the cutter, a wider part of the cutter, and we no longer are in danger of cutting into the side of that boss. The top features of this part are complete and we're now going to do the same thing with the bottom step. We have almost everything we need in the process ready except we need to set the step top, minus one, and the step bottom. And we're going to use what we just learned from the large diameter bore, is we're going to do minus one, minus 0.150. So that's minus 1.150. We still have a 20,000 chamfer with a 50 thousandths overlap. We only need to select the geometry select the outside circle and click do it and now we have a toolpath down there on the top of this step right here and notice that it did say 25 thousandths we're going to change that very quickly let's change our started op to 16 so that we can start right there without having to watch the whole program run again here we are with single block and let's watch the tool as it enters the part and make sure that the side of the tool does not hit the lower step. And it looks like our deburr is complete. But remember, I made a mistake. I said that it was 20 thousandths in diameter. We don't need to even leave machine sim. Simply open the operation and minus 0.025. Press Rewind, and the toolpath has refreshed itself automatically. Let's turn the stop off and watch this part machined one more time. Face milling to zero. Volume mill, and remember the volume mill toolpath can use two times the diameter. That's a lot better than the old. 25% of the diameter that we had to use back when we were using conventional roughing. Conventional roughing and volume mill differ because we're only using a small slice of the cutter. Instead of using 70 or 80% of the cutter, we're using 6 to 12% of the cutter. This allows us to increase our feed rates dramatically and reduce stress on the part and to more efficiently use our end mill and our end mill flutes. Let's speed this up to watch the end of this cycle. All of the deburring work has been done on this part and this part has now been machined complete. You may go back and watch this video as many times as you want and each time you do you will learn something new.